Hi, I'll be giving you a five minute overview of article databases. I'll start with a few words on databases in general. Electronic databases are typically created to collect, organize, and store information that can later be searched and retrieved. We often use databases without really thinking about it. eBay, Wikipedia, iTunes, Yellowpages.com, Flickr, and Google all use some sort of back-end database to support their websites. These databases are similar in their purpose, but different in the kind of information they deal with, so their search boxes are different too. For example, why and how you search for businesses on yellowpages.com will be different from how you might search for sale items on eBay or pictures on Flickr. Research libraries purchase and provide access to a number of online databases that are designed to help you find articles and book chapters. Basically what's been published on a topic and how to get a hold of it without having to purchase a copy for yourself. These databases are usually called article databases or indexes because you use them to search for scholarly journals, newspapers, and magazines. They sometimes also contain the full text of the articles, in addition to information about them. Some databases cover a broad range of subjects. For example, the general database, Academic Search Premier, will include articles on a variety of topics in different subject areas. On the other hand, a specialized database like PaperChem will only cover articles that report on specific topics, such as paper science. Let's take a look at some of the basic features most databases have. At the very least, all article databases will have a search box and a button to submit your search to get a list of results, much like Google. But article databases will offer more powerful features than this, like the ability to have more than one search box and to indicate more specifically what you want to search for. For example, if you want an article about Hemingway, you can tell the database to search only in the subject field so that your results will only show you articles that are about Hemingway written by other people, and not articles or books written by Hemingway himself. Another useful feature is the ability to limit your search results to a specific subset of the database. For example, you can tell the database to show you the results of a particular year or type of publication, like journal articles. If all else fails, every database has a link to get help that will provide recommended strategies for searching that particular database. Once you submit your search, a page with results will appear. The results page will have a lot of features similar to those available on online shopping sites. There will be a summary of what you've searched for, usually near the top of the page. This is also called a search query. The results page will include a list of items the database found that match your search. Most often the items title, authors, publication, and date will be listed. If there's no full text version of the article, click the Where Can I Get This link to search across the collection at SFU Library. On the results page, you have the ability to sort the order of the results by different criteria like date, relevance, and author. Sorting capabilities tend to be located near the top of the page. Another useful feature lets you select items to add to a marked list or folder, kind of like the shopping cart feature on most online stores like Amazon and iTunes. From the folder, you can email, print, or save only the results that you want. Databases will usually offer an option on the results page to refine your search. Some may have specific options on the results page, or may simply provide a link back to the original search page where you can change your search terms or limiters there. If you need more help searching across article databases, contact a librarian.